Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the abilities that we have with inside of Autodesk Inventor tooling. Once we've modeled up these components within Inventor, without leaving the interface, we can, en we can enter the Inventor tooling environment. This is going to give us the ability to sit down and analyze fill time based on suggested gate locations. We're going to be able to sit down and, and analyze um, the air traps, where the air traps or weld lines might be within this three-dimensional model and animate the fill so that we can further analyze how this geometry is going to react when we start to go into manufacturing of this product. Before we've even built these components, we can truly experience a digital prototype model and experience this component before it's real without even uh, cutting any steel um, for, for generating the molds of this overall model. So very easily we're able to sit down and, and gain confidence in the overall designs that we're doing. If we don't have successful designs or the fill times are a little too long, we can go back and make modi modifications to the geometry accordingly. Autodesk Inventor tooling is going to allow us to take um, uh, the actual model that we've built with the plastic features or without the plastic features inside of Autodesk Inventor and start to build the core and cavity of the overall geometry that we're working with very easily we're able to go inside and define the overall workspace. What region do we want to set this up? So we're going to get a visual representation within Autodesk Inventor to make sure we're within the bounds of the regions that we want to set up or specify for this model. I'm going to go ahead and make these modifications and in a real-time environment get an updated preview of how large this overall workspace is going to be from the center planes that I'm working with on this model. Making it very easy and intuitive for a designer or a mechanical designer to sit down and, and visualize um, the core and cavity generation of this component. As well as a mold maker to be able to sit down and generate these components at the least cost possible. Right? That's what we're trying to define as a quality component at the lowest possible cost. We have capabilities of doing detailed information like generate the patching surfaces so we know where in the core cavity should be split on the geometry. Maybe we have some additional patching surfaces that the automated tools are recognizing that we don't want recognized on the model. We're going to be able to go in here and delete those specified features. We can go through and it's going to update and preview each of these specific models so that we can see which ones we want to delete and which ones we don't want to delete. So I'm going to go in here and delete these overall models, find that in the specified window, and simply delete this component. With the component deleted, I now have the patching features defined on the overall model that I want or want to use for generating the overall core and cavity for the model. Once I'm satisfied, you'll go ahead and lay that out for us um, within the core and cavity generation tool. I simply now need to generate or work from left to right in the interface. The tools themselves make it very easy to use within Autodesk Inventor compared to competitive products. We can very easily generate these runoff surfaces and have this successfully work much better than any competitive product on the market today. So we're simply going to go ahead and generate the core and cavity once we've defined the patching surfaces and runoff surfaces and run our parting diagnostic. We have a parting diagnostic tool built into our with built into the interface to allow us to visualize are we do we have problems with draft? Are we going to have any problems with the core and cavity that we're building on this model? Are there things that we need to look out for on the geometry that maybe we didn't think about while modeling? Now that the core and cavity is generated literally within a matter of seconds, we're going to be able to set up further information to generate the appropriate tooling for this component. Keep in mind, these are functions and benefits that none of our comp competitive products have. SolidWorks doesn't have this ability to work with this information in this manner and truly generate the tooling for the component without having to manually do it. Let's go ahead and focus on some additional detail that we need on this component. We might want to specify a selected gate location for this model. We have the capability of placing multiple gate locations within our part documentation um, or within our part model itself that we're working with here. I can specify an exact like gate location with a dimensional value and apply that onto the component geometry. This makes it very easy um, to be able to sit down and work with that geometry that's been created. Now, based on this model that I'm working with, I might want to modify some of the orientation of the geometry or the patterns that I generated um, with the overall assembly that I'm creating um, to line up specific gate locations at their appropriate target positions. So I'm simply going to go back and make some modifications or edit that so that I flip uh, the pattern component in the opposite direction so that I'm working with the gate locations to be on the same side of the geometry. 
once I've completed that, I'm going to go ahead and rebuild this assembly. Now I have everything lined up as I, as I want it to be lined up. And what I want to work with now is I want to generate some, some different models within this geometry to lay out the, the, the runner um, definitions and the actual gate geometry that I want to create for this model. Maybe for further analyzation purposes, maybe for building some of the additional tooling that I want to build on this geometry. So I have the capability of going in and generating, for example, a runner sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and select the area or surface that I want to lay this runner sketch on within my component here. I'll go ahead and make the selection of the geometry or the placement position of this geometry that I want to create. And then simply Inventor allows us to rotate that geometry to a specified angle. I can rotate that manually or type in a value and finish creating that, that runner sketch off. I'm going to use this sketch to create or to control where I want to con create the, the actual runner itself. So I'm going to control the actual dimension that I'm placing on this model, give it a dimensional value that fits into that region that I want to use, and finish that sketch off. This sketch can now freely be used to generate the actual runner itself. I can modify that sketch within the native sketch environment inside of Autodesk Inventor. And I can work seamlessly inside of this tooling and inventor environment, not even having to change or leave the interface. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to define the end conditions. So we're getting into some significant detail when generating these, this type of geometry with inside of Inventor tooling. Next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and generate the overall gates for this component. So I'm going to simply place that gate. I have a gate location point that I've defined on that component. Now I just have to define what type of gate do I actually want to put on this component and how do I want to build this into my model. So I'm going to simply select uh, the point location and the endpoint location that I want this gate to run from and place that in. I get a nice preview of the gate that's being generated. I can control the overall dimensions and make changes to that model. And it's going to go ahead and place that on both sides of the pattern component for me. I don't have to worry about updating that pattern or placing additional gate components within the assembly that I'm working with. So once I've completed generating this overall assembly and tooling and, uh, and componentry setup with the gates and runners applied to the assembly itself with the pattern applied, I now want to generate the mold base. And I'm going to select from a variety of different vendor types that I can pull from with a variety of different sizes and controls that maybe I want to build on this model. I can access this, this information from a centralized storage location so everybody on the network has access to the same tooling components within the Autodesk Inventor interface, making it very easy for me to set up and use this information over and over again. I'm going to get a nice actual preview in the preview window there of where my part sits. You can see my actual component that's laid out in red. And I'm going to lay out the parameters of how I want to position this component within the tooling itself. So very easily I'm able to sit down, make the selection of what tooling I want to use, position this component with the gates and runners placed in the geometry, and finish off the overall assembly model.